Welcome back. The last time we talked about this guitar, I had bound the neck, the fretboard. Well, when I went to trim the fretboard to make it even with the sides, the binding flew apart, several different pieces. So I had to come up with what I had available in order to bind this neck. And I have several options. I have a strip of maple here and another couple pieces of maple. This is some ash that the body was made out of. And finally that is walnut. And this would be a last resort. If the walnut is used, the neck will not look like it's bound, but it will be bound. This is my first choice. And hopefully I can get it out of this. But if you look at it, I don't know if you can see, but it's bent. It's bowed. So I'm going to take it to the table saw and try to trim the edge of it straight and then see what I can get. And I'll be back after I get the pieces that I need to bind the neck with. But I'll go through all of these in order until I get what I need. If I can't get it out of one, I'll get it out of the other. So, of course, safety glasses, because this is a power tool, and I'm going to start with this one, see what I can get. And, uh have a little sanding block and what I'm going to do is I'm going to prep the edges of the fretboard because they had super glue on them I need to get that glue off so the wood glue that these pieces will, that will be used to glue these pieces on this binding will stick uh, I did not get uh, maple out of that first I had to move on to the second pieces of wood in order to get it but I did get some binding maple binding and I think that the maple will match the rest of the bindings better but you never know until you know you get finish on it if that'll change the way the maple looks and you see me scraping now with a razor blade just trying to get any kind of glue squeeze out or anything that's between the binding and the fretboard so that I get a nice smooth contact all along the length of the fretboard. And here I am checking the fit. Now it's just a matter of gluing it on. I'm going to get me some tape started so that I can tape the binding once I get glue on it. And the tape is being finicky so I skipped to where I got it and did put you through the misery of watching me try to get the tape started. So once again, test the fit, make sure that I have the side out that I want facing out. And then, when I go to get the glue, there's dried glue all over the nozzle. This is where you should grab your pocket knife. Yes, you should have a pocket knife. And it should be sharp. If you look on my main page, you will find sharpening videos get you a pocket knife and learn how to keep it sharp because there's all kinds of uses for one and one of the things about modern society is most people don't carry one and the thing with it is is when you carry one you'll find 101 different uses for it all the time and you'll wonder why 
you didn't carry one before. So I'm just running a thin strip of glue down the side of the fretboard. And I'm going to use the greatest glue spreader ever made. And it was one made by God and it's called my finger. And so we'll just, once I've got a good even film of glue, I'm going to lay the binding down and position it properly. And then we're going to go with the tape. And we'll tape this down and then we'll turn the neck over and work on the other side. And I think that this um, binding is not going to fly apart because it's actually glued to, it's wood glued to wood and it should be a stronger bond. And you'll have to excuse my voice, it's a little gravelly. I laid floor in my bedroom yesterday and the dust from the treated plywood, cutting it with saw, uh, skill saw, I forgot to put a mask on and so I am struggling with the repercussions of that. With asthma, when I do stuff like that and forget that I need a mask, I pay for it pretty badly. And you should always, anytime you are uh, creating actual sawdust, planes, hand plates, chisels, things like that. Okay, here we are on the other side. But back to what I was saying, hand planes and chisels, actual cutting tools, don't leave dust. Which is another reason I prefer to use them. But power tools make dust. And when that dust is flying all up in the air, you are breathing it in. And the stuff that they use to treat wood to keep it from, to make it resistant to weather or is bad stuff that I shouldn't have breathed in and you should not. So keep that in mind if you get into woodworking of any kind. And also like uh, some of the exotic woods, even stuff like just rosewood. Okay, which a lot of people consider exotic, but it's one of the most common woods in the tar building. Even something like that, if you uh, breathe that dust in enough, you can become what's known as sensitized to it. And it can be really nasty. So anytime you make dust with wood, wear a mask. And that's the end of my rant on that. But it, you should understand and know that. And all I'm doing is I'm just putting pressure at the edge of the binding and then pulling to either side so that it pulls the binding tight to the binding channel. It doesn't take a huge amount of pressure for something like this straight run. Uh, when you get into the curves of a body sometimes it takes you know extra measures to make things work but for something straight like this you don't need much And hopefully this will be the last time I have to do this. It's not ideal to use this wood, but I did not have any more of the binding. And so it is what it is. It's the first build. I'm not going to sweat it. So there it is. I'm going to set it and let it dry overnight. And then I'll come back and trim it and, and things like that. Thanks for watching.
Later.